Welcome back. Today we're talking about electrical. We're gonna get to the solar panels, but first let's talk about where everything, almost missed the bench, where everything started. When I first picked up the Scamp, it didn't really have an electrical system. Someone had taken out the battery and nothing was hooked up to electrical. So basically the only things that were being used appliance wise were things that ran off propane, which were the uh, stove and the fridge. And uh, actually the heater didn't even work uh, because it has an electrical ignition. So let's talk about how the electrical system was originally set up in the Scamp uh, 20 years ago. So you had a lead acid battery, I believe on the tongue, and that battery had wires that ran inside the Scamp back to this um, electrical converter box. From here, it sends power to the lights, to the fan, um, to the igniter, to the exterior light on the front of the Scamp, and then also to the Dometic fridge. And then it also has breakers to send power, AC power, when you're plugged into short power, to the various outlets around the Scamp, which actually there's just two. There's one right here, and then there is one uh, where you access the back of the fridge from the outside. When I picked up the Scamp, the 120 volt system, so the outlets all worked, but there was no battery on the tongue, and then all the wires basically had been cut and disconnected and weren't labeled properly. I temporarily put some lithium batteries in the bench area since all of the wires ended up there that went to all the appliances. I thought I was gonna keep my electrical system all under there. The issue that I realized was, um, and I came across this on a long trip to Utah, I put two um, 100 amp hour lithium batteries in there and each of those weighs around 30 pounds. Um, since this trailer is so light, 60 pounds in the back of the trailer behind the axle makes a big difference for trailer sway. I had some very scary moments on the highway. On my trip back from Utah, I moved the batteries from underneath the bench to underneath this bench, uh, just to see uh, how that would affect the drive and it made a huge difference. So this is the new electrical setup. We've got 200 amp hour lithium batteries in parallel here. And then the positive terminal comes down through here to this uh, master shutoff switch, which then goes up and connects to this Lynx Power N. The Lynx Power N is basically a big negative bus bar and positive bus bar. So the positive comes here and the negative terminal from the batteries comes to the negative bus bar and then um, the whole bus bar is grounded to the chassis through the front of the scamp. And what I did was I just kind of ground an area off the frame of the trailer and attached it there. So from right to left, we have the battery terminals. Then this goes to the DC bus bar. Then this is solar in. And then this is um, going to the fan. The uh, batteries are charged either through solar or they have a Victron Blue Smart battery charger and that charges it at 15 amps from a wall plug which is behind here. So anytime the scamp is plugged into uh, like shore power or an outlet then it'll charge these batteries up to 15 amps. So this is a pretty tight system here. The reason I didn't put all the DC fuses in here is because all the wires terminated over here in this area. So I ran these wires through here, underneath here, behind the fridge and galley, under the sink area, and they come out in here. So all of your appliances used to hook up here and you had a little fuse panel inside this box. Now I have it just here inside this DC fuse panel and I'm using the power converter box for all the AC power. So real quickly, we'll talk about the AC system. This used to run to uh, like a, a shore power cable. It was about 
20 feet long or so, so it would take up a lot of the area in here. I've lopped it off here, cut it short, added a regular uh, outlet to it, and then I bought this extension, which fit perfectly in the kind of entry gland for the shore power cable, and screwed that in place, and it just basically plugs in here. So now you just take a regular extension cable, and then you can plug it into here, and it'll power all your AC outlets. Since the fridge and um, battery charger for the system are plugged into an AC outlet, you can run those off of AC power. We've got the battery monitor here. So it's really nice. You have it right here when you're eating or sleeping, you can kind of check the state of your battery. It's at 54%, so it's kind of getting low. I don't have much solar here. Um, underneath the trees, but uh, when I have it parked in the front, it has direct sunlight, so it usually is topped off when I'm ready to go on a trip. Uh, I also upgraded the thermostat to a newer version, and then I added a switch here, which uh, actually, there's like a little LED light that I routed through here so I could see when I have to work in there. But the main thing is, it has some nice under cabinet lighting. Also added, um, and this was maybe not the best spot to put it, I realized, but I added uh, little DC USB ports for like charging your phone. When it's in bed mode, this isn't in the way, but when you're not in bed mode, it's kind of, a, it's kind of annoying to like plug wires there. So yeah, now we've got everything hooked up to power. This is the water pump. We've got running water. You can flip this on, kick it up, and it'll engage the heater, blower, get things running, propane's off, so I shouldn't really run that anyway. Now the fan works. Fridge, we can run off a 12 volt. Give that a second to kick off. All right, and I think now might be a good time to talk about what most of you guys are probably interested in, which are the solar panels. So for solar panels, I decided to go with this company called Zamp Solar. They're from Bend, Oregon. And I went with them because they have this really low profile, thin solar panel from their Obsidian series. I have two 45 watt panels and a 90 watt panel all in parallel to make 180 watts. And um, they all go through this junction box right here into the scamp. Solar panel wires run down behind the door frame and into the battery area. So I kind of came up with my own system for attaching the panels to the scamp. Uh, first, I bought these brackets off Amazon and attached them to the channels on the bottom of the solar panels with a roll-in like T-nut. Um, once I had all the brackets on, I came out here to make sure they would um, clear the curve of the scamp, which they do. And then I didn't want to put very many holes in the scamp, so I used Sikaflex to attach most of the brackets to the scamp but just for a little added security, I added a riv nut through the scamp on the front side of this panel. And then I did it on the front side of the back panel in a very similar way. And on this side, the two brackets that touch the scamp are just glued on. And then I have some aluminum kind of L-shaped brackets that attach to my awning brackets. So I been using these for a few months now actually and they've been working out really well um, I'd highly recommend them and they I think they look pretty sleek on the scamp they're really low profile so it's not like you're adding a bunch of bulk only thing I will say is sometimes when I'm driving there's like a whistling sound coming from probably the solar panels but it's not super annoying anyway that pretty much does it for my upgrades to the scamp I've got a new project sitting in the driveway right now that I hope to get to. If you stuck through this far to the end of the video, you're a champ. Thanks for watching, and we're gonna see you in the next one.